You're listening to the Inside Commerce podcast hosted by experienced consultants James Gerd and Paul Rogers. Inside Commerce is your fast track to digital knowledge, featuring interviews with leading e-commerce retailers, industry thought leaders, and the C-suite of key tech companies to explore the latest in digital strategy, customer experience, and tech. Discover what the latest trends really mean and get practical advice based on experience to help fine tune your e-com strategy and tech stack. Follow us on LinkedIn and reach out to James or Paul if you'd like to discuss an e-commerce project. We hope you enjoy the latest episode. Hello, this podcast episode is sponsored by Swap Commerce and Greben. More about them later. This is our quarter to 24 um, strategic vendor update. So we started this uh, in Q1 this year, it proved very popular. So we talk to the leadership teams of, of leading vendors when they've got some interesting updates to share with you their viewpoint on what what they've been up to, the direction they're headed in, and and also key feature releases and what they mean to merchants. We think it's really important that people get to hear directly from the leadership teams within these vendors. And on top of myself and Paul and our various guests also discussing the technology landscape and what it means. So I hope you enjoy this quarter's update. Do reach out with comments. And also, we'd love to hear what you think of the vendors and what's impressed you in the last quarter. Excellent. And now let's talk to Shopify. This is fresh off the back of uh, Edition's Summer 24 landing. So if you haven't already seen it, you really should start reading through it because there's a feast of new releases and, and updates. A warm welcome to Emily from Shopify. How are you, Emily? Hi, James. I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm very happy to be here again. Excellent. Would you like to just quickly introduce people to who you are and what your role is, and then we'll get into the questions. Sure. Uh, I'm Emily Benoit Bernet, and I lead uh, our partnerships team in EMEA. Uh, our partnerships team supporting our uh, agencies, system integrators, and tech partners. Magic, thanks very much. Um, right onto the onto the fun questions that everyone's here about. What are the key trends that, from your point of view, that that, that you'll see and that are influencing your roadmap? So I will say that, you know, like uh, a couple of years ago, it was all about omni-channel, multi-channel, like it was like one of those big uh, buzzwords. What we've noticed uh, in uh, more recent times is that uh, it all comes down to a unified commerce experience where everything integrates seamlessly. Uh, at Shopify, we feel it's more than just synchronizing and centralizing feature. It's really about consolidating the infrastructure. And why is that? Because at the end of the day, the data is, um, co- you know, at core of everything and business need to be able to capture the data they collect from prospect, customers and product and have a single view of inventory orders and customer data then in real time. Um, just to really be able to make an informed business decision. So for us, one of the key themes, uh, this year and this edition time is actually uh, this unified commerce experience. Interesting. You know, it's funny how terminology changes over the years, but I've heard a few people say the same because they they um they don't believe that the language of like omnichannel and multi-channel works. So I'm interested. It's interesting to hear that coming from you guys as well. Um, so let's. So that's the key trend. So that that flows nicely into like project uh, product releases, and obviously you were all over in Toronto last week for the the, the big Shopify event, and Editions has landed. So can, what can you talk us through? What are the major new releases that you want us to to hear about? Yes, so we were all last week uh, in Toronto to celebrate Shopify twenty years anniversary, and it was also the launch of Shopify Editions, as you mentioned, with the overarching team of Unified Commerce. Because not all unified commerce, not all unified software is great. However, every great software is unified. So we've been building and really working a new set of features to provide the seamless experience. We really want to, um, you know, refine every service. And uh, this is to meet the change, um, that are the demands that are impacting the merchants and, uh, the, the customers. So we have three products that I want to call out, uh, you know, during this podcast. There's 150 new product release, but I'll keep it short to three products, actually. The first one is uh, markets. Uh, so Shopify markets is now turned into markets and markets is really becoming this central command within the Shopify admin that allows you to pilot not only your uh, cross-border channels, but also your B2B channel also your retail channel in order to have this really seamless view. It's, um, it's really something that we're 
super excited about, uh, especially for us in Europe, because cross-border is a big part of what we do. So uh, this investment into this uh, better experience and unified experience for the cross-border um, activity is really exciting, uh, I feel. The second one is actually on the retail side of things. So also another channel, uh, you know, we have a Shopify uh, POS Go that was launched in the UK uh, earlier this year. So we're launching the hardware terminal to the UK again, and we are launching Shopify Go to uh, Germany, Spain and Italy to offer also this really frictionless experience that happens in store, translating into also the uh, back office uh, of Shopify. And last but not least, AI. Uh, I have to touch on AI, obviously. So we are also uh, working on the cutting edge of the latest uh, technology uh, innovation. We now have a media editor when you can uh, create uh, pictures on the go. And we're working on improving, of course, uh, the real-time responses with suggested replies supported by Shopify Magic. Thanks. I feel like every, now, every e-commerce conversation needs a buzzer to count how many times we have to we say ai but it, it, it's true i mean it, it it is massive and it's it's everywhere at the moment um intra it's interesting to hear the pulse um expansion in europe as well uh so let's let's put the forward looking lens then because obviously last week you know the entire shopify community were there talking about strategy products etc what what are the priorities for the next quarter what can merchants um like expect coming down the line so I will say like uh, one priority that is very clear and that I'm super excited about is that Europe is really vital to Shopify future success. You know, it's now our second largest region uh, outside of North America. In 2023, uh, Shopify gener generated consolidated revenues of 1.2 billion in EMEA, and that is 18% of our uh, total revenue. Uh, so all those, uh, you know, we're investing massively in the region. It's definitely a priority. We know that, uh, you know, like the growth of, across Europe economies have, have been a bit subdued. But however, our latest uh, state of commerce report, uh, you know, shows the, the battle to boost the economy through retail that is far from lost. You know, we say that 85% of European consumers, uh, would be more loyal if brands were to offer them additional value from promotions to unexpected surprises. And almost half of the brands expect to offer a tech-enabled shopping experience. So we Shopify really at the forefront of the needs and the desires from the customers to really fuel the merchant growth through innovation and technology. Our goal is really to bring a Shopify vision of commerce to all merchants, from the entrepreneurs to the enterprise-level merchants. I, I like, I mean, it's good to have bold visions. Um interesting uh look, thanks very much um for for taking the time as always emily always lovely to chat to you and for anybody who wants to reach out ask more or connect anyone who's, who wants to connect from a partnership point of view um emily's link will be in the landing page on our website uh, i look forward to doing this again uh for q3 emily yeah me too thanks james grab and create digital flagship stores for iconic brands of today and tomorrow we are the number one Centra agency in the world, with more than 50 Centra implementations to date. We are also e-commerce design specialists, platform and tech partner agnostic. Try our new e-commerce design subscription. Visit greben.com. Excellent. So let's move on to big commerce now and a warm welcome back to Mark Adams, who's SVP and GEM from here. How are you doing, Mark? I'm very good, James. Thank you for having me back. Oh, no, I'm glad to have it. I like the fact that your job title is just letters and not words. I just noticed <laughs> that. It means so much, doesn't it, to, to be for um, these letters? Re I really appreciate you coming back. I always enjoy our chats and hearing hearing what's happening at Big Commerce. So let's let's get cracking. Now let's start with the key trends that you all see that are currently influencing Big Commerce's thinking and roadmap. Um, well, I'd I'd kind of quantify it into into four areas of um, feature development, and this is really aligned to Big Commerce's strategy to move. To move up market into large enterprise you know we've been on that journey for five or six years now but we're really beginning to accelerate it and be very very uh dedicated towards it uh both in terms of how we go to market but in terms of also the the, the product roadmap so I'd, I'd book it into four areas helping our customers grow a lot of that is around the international and cross-border selling features and functionality that we continue to deliver and have been delivering uh composability is 
the probably the biggest single trend, whether that's in B two C or B two B for enterprise. Actually, um, so we talked uh, last time about the launch of Catalyst and new, um, you know, uh, headless storefront architecture and makes of the acquisition we made, which is the uh, the, the headless page content page editing page building technology that are being integrated at the moment. So composability is really uh, strategically important to us. And most of our big enterprise wins are actually um, strong, composable um, case studies. Uh, the third is AI. Uh, we've got our big AI initiatives, um, and, and they go across the entire platform. Um, a lot around personalization, search improvements, search technology improvements, um, and, and copywriting and you know product descriptions we, talk, we spoke about last time. So we've got a significant investment in, in AI now. And the fourth, of course, is B2B, where we have been really strong over the last 12 months. Uh, and we're now again pushing, uh, you know, B2B up market to, to larger, more sophisticated enterprises with that platform. So those are the, those are the main, um, focus areas for us. Excellent. Yeah. If, if anyone listening, uh, we are going to be doing a follow up podcast in a few weeks time around the latest product release in more detail where we will definitely be covering B2B because there's some very interesting stuff like the open sourcing of the buyer portal. I'll be talking to Space 48 in more detail about so keep your ears peeled. Um, that's really useful. I like the way you bucket it into four, four kind of like key themes, which is useful. So let's talk about major releases then. Um, so what, what are the new things that you guys are most proud of that's landed well with merchants? And I like what, I guess what the benefits to those merchants? Yeah. So we took the decision and I think, uh, you, you were there at our customer conference, the big summit in April, James. Uh, we took the decision to kind of bucket our releases into two big yearly releases. Um, the first one in 24 came in April. Uh, we're calling it the next big thing. Uh, the next one is due, um, and will be announced at our, um, America's summit, um, uh, it, towards the end of August. Um, and if I, if I characterize kind of what was in the next big thing, it was over a hundred, uh, features, product releases, uh, pre integrations, uh, from some of our partners. Um, and, if I book it into a whole bunch of areas, it was around global expansion, localization. So delivering on that multi storefront initiative, uh, the composable and headless commerce capabilities, particularly around headless storefronts and, and the, the technology architecture to support that. Um, you know, AI powered features, as I've just mentioned, uh, we released the big AI copyright, uh, copywriter for generating SEO optimized product descriptions. For example, we're working uh, towards uh, predictive analytics as well using Google BigQuery. So advancing on uh, something we'd already developed. Um, and, you know, more, more AI around semantic search, more AI around product recommendations, for example, that are baked in core to the platform and licensed with the platform. Um, enhanced B2B functionality, the buyer portal we've talked about. But really, when you look at B2B, um, the early stages, I think, of our strategy with B2B was to go and you know, create the business user interfaces for B2B customers to trade effectively and efficiently. Um, but then to go and extend that functionality to make it more enterprise grade. So improving on the quoting features, improving on price listing functionality, uh, opening up more APIs, um, using our graph, uh, QL APIs, for example, uh, just making it more and more flexible, more and more open. Uh, it's certainly the strategy there. Uh, Another area is in feedomics integration. So, you know, adding more marketplaces, uh, more tightly integrating it to big commerce itself, uh, which we announced in the next big thing. Uh, improved checkout and payment options. I think we announced, uh, you know, the fast lane integration that's just going live in the US um, in April and will be coming to Europe uh, later this year, hopefully. Um, continued operational efficiency improvements, continued performance improvements on the platform. So yeah, a hundred plus features covering all of those areas. So it's, it was a pretty extensive release. And yeah, we'll, um, we'll make sure there's a, for anyone listening, there'll be a link on the landing page to, to more information. If you want to dig deeper into those, those hundred releases, et cetera. Um, it leads me on to like a final question, Mark, and you were alluding to this before we start recording about, I guess, strategic direction and, and how you guys are thinking about the market and the product and solutions. But what what is the strategic direction you're going in there? What what are some of the things that people can expect big commerce going forward? Uh, I think you can expect us to to really start, um, you know, putting the pedal down on moving towards large enterprise, um, and we're demonstrating that by the kind of customer wins that we're that that we're achieving at the moment. I think in the last podcast, James, I spoke about recharge, which was 
you know, seven, eight hundred million euro GMV business that we that we bought on um, the end of Q4. We actually started launching their sites uh, from uh, February, March. Uh, and, you know, last week we signed our biggest ever customer in Europe. Um, I can't announce the name of that, that particular customer now uh, just yet. Uh, but, you know, and in, in our pipeline, we have a whole bunch of really large enterprise customers where we're, we're, the, the strategic focus is, is to support you know, moving um, these customers from legacy technology platforms uh, where everything is highly expen- expensive, everything takes such a long time to do, um, uh, and and the customer can't just move fast enough, but do it in a way which reduces and mitigates the risk of project delivery. Uh, and so when you think about our strategy around Catalyst and Make Swift, we want to provide the out-of-the-box tools and the starting point to be able to accelerate a project, but we want customers to have the flexibility to deploy you know, the business cases and the use cases that they have. And that's absolutely our strategy. And I think the final thing we're doing is actually, you know, evolving our go-to-market strategy to be able to support selling and delivering into those types of customers. So big investment in customer success and professional services over the last year, uh, you know, upskilling and bringing in new enterprise-grade um, sales and partner people, for example, uh, more I can announce on on, on that. So we're, we're really thinking about this holistically and very excited to see what the next um, uh, six months bring brings for big commerce um, in, in the enterprise. But yeah, the, 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 the strategy to go and win there, genuinely go and win there, is is what we're chasing. Interesting. I think that comes across quite clearly, actually. And I think people who don't know big commerce very well will actually be quite surprised to realize the sheer size of some of the merchants you have specifically in the us as well um how many hundreds of millions are going through in gmv through the platform and, and some of the more complex b2b so it's something people should definitely have a look at so if you do if you are running a a, a larger more complex business and you want to probe further do reach out to mark um there'll be contact details in the episode link so mark thanks as always for coming on and giving us the strategic update You're welcome, James. I look forward to the next episode. Thank you very much. Swap is the e-commerce operating system powering brands looking to scale. From shipping, tracking and package protection to returns and cross-border, Swap improves every pain point in your operations journey. Trade in your tech stack for the one system that can manage it all. This is e-commerce evolved. Excellent. Now let's move on to our next uh, key vendor and we're talking to Centra. And a warm welcome back to Martin Jensen. How are you, Martin? Hey, I'm excellent. Thank you. Nice to be here. Excellent. thanks. Martin's um, uh, one of the founders of Centra, therefore has been part of the building this from the ground up and, and has a very close eye on, on where their product's going. So we're always happy to get Martin on and hear his vision um, for Centra and where it's headed. Nice so, to be here. Yeah, well, it's good to see you again. Um, are you ready for some questions, Martin? Absolutely. Excellent. Let's start with the first one. Like major new product releases from the last quarter and yeah, what what have you delivered for merchants, basically? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll I'll start with the thing I'm the most uh, excited about. So we rolled out a bunch of updates when it comes to our uh, wholesale part of the platform, the B two B part of the platform. When it comes to integrations with the email marketing tool, CRM, CDPs of the world, um, with we see like um, CRM marketing is sort of a natural part of any type of D two C commerce, but we see B two B commerce is really lagging. So we've uh, um, added a bunch of functionalities there. And of course, B2B is a bit more complex. You're dealing with accounts and buyers, different, you know, multiple peoples representing the same account and so on. And we're quite excited about the updates. Essentially, what it enables is for merchants to really target um, target their B2B buyers uh, using their email marketing tools and using their CRMs in, this, in sort of a D2C style way. So exciting about that. Um, we also released a bunch of updates on the B2B side to our like page builder. We have like a no code uh, page builder studio, you could call it, where you can uh, design your B2B web shop really in a very straightforward way. And we released a bunch of new layouts. I guess that's part of the same theme, like really B2B commerce becoming more D2C experience, type experience. So excited about that. Um, on the, on um, the other side of the platform, looking at the direct to consumer side of the platform we've done a done a few updates one worth highlighting is uh, maybe not the most exciting one but an important one we've updated how we actually handle taxes for invoices 
um, specifically for clients that operate the different legal entities across the world and so on and need to issue, um, you know, compliance wise, correct receipts and invoices from a bunch of different legal entities. So maybe not the most exciting update, but an important one. Um, and uh, we also released an update to the integration we have with Clavio uh, on the D2C side. So now we're running on the latest uh, Clavio API that they just released. So supporting all the new Clavio functionality. Cool. I really like that actually because yeah, the, the, the B, uh, in B2B um, low no code page builder is really, really useful because a lot of B2B businesses aren't mature in their content and CMS strategy, but actually a page builder is a massive benefit. And I like the fact that you are also going in on things that are might not be the sexy and glamorous side of ecom, but they just make people's lives easier around the tax handling. So that's it's really nice. But, you know, it doesn't have to be sexy to be really useful, right? Yeah, exactly. No, that's absolutely true. Yeah, we we see a huge growth in the B two B commerce. Actually, of course, B two B has had its up and downs, but really being able to serve like a, a global B two B audience at scale using and. Uh, e-commerce type approach we really believe in that cool uh, right next question which is linked to this which is what are the key trends that you're you guys are seeing out in the market that you work with a load of different businesses all shapes and sizes what are the trends that you're seeing that are influencing your roadmap yeah i think i think there are a few really major trends and that i i bet i'm going to say similar stuff as, uh, as the other vendors are also saying we see we see um, analytics and especially generative ai actually um, you know, exploding. We work with a lot of fashion brands and we see a lot of brands actually using generative AI now to generate, um, you know, product media going essentially from um, 3D model design sketches to, um, vis- you know, uh, visual product media. Maybe not, maybe not for like the online flagship store, uh, but for sure for visualizing pre-orders in the B2B. Um, into in the B two B pre order phase of a product life cycle, just visualizing how it looks. Really coming, obviously, product content. Uh, more and more brands are adopting that. Um, so so continued like analytics and AI trend. Um, we see sustainability still being a, a big trend, and we see more and more brands are actually taking action. Um, I think if you would have interviewed me like a, a year ago or. 18 months ago, I would have been speaking about the new features we release when it comes to product transparency, having a really rich product model, um, you know, full full sustainability information on a very granular level. Uh, what we see now is more and more brands are actually starting to use that functionality that we have, um, creating more transparency around the origin of products, uh, about the um, sustainability footprint of products, which I think is uh, that's really nice to see. Um, I think uh, third third area where we see um, see a lot of lot of the brands we work work we're having projects right now is to enable omnichannel. So actually, going you know, lot, many brands have had some sort of omnichannel, but really uh, going all the way with omnichannel and and actually considering uh, not only a few stores but all stores as fulfillment points, and making sure there is a three sixty degree view of the customer. Uh, no matter which channel they are shopping in. So that would see us a big trend as well. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I, I really like what you guys have been doing around omni-channel and prioritizing it and, and actually not just having the ability to show stuff on the front end, but having the logic flows built in, um, which is often where the disconnect is. So that's interesting. Uh, so just yeah. on, to our, on to our third question then. Um, the the future lens going forward into the next quarter, Like, what, what are your priorities from, a, I guess, from either a strategy or a product point of view? Yeah, so a few things happening the the next quarter that we're working on right now with the targeted release uh, next quarter. Um, so one is actually the omni-channel. I think I mentioned when we spoke maybe a few months back that we're working on on improving that allocation logic. So essentially, you know, which order is going to be fulfilled by which warehouse, whether that's a DC or or a store. Um, now we're continuing with with better split shipment functionality. So the use case is basically that. Um, I want to do a split shipment and there are some things available in a store and some things are not. And, uh, you know, then the use case is that maybe I'm, I'm, I'm shopping, um, you know, a dress and I'm shopping a sweater and it happens to be that the dress I need by Friday because I want to wear it for a party on Friday. So the, for the dress, I really want to have it. Um, I really want to go and pick it up in a store because I can't wait for it to get shipped. But the, 
but my my other item I want to have shipped maybe you know the most sustainable and and uh, and cheapest shipping option there is available basically so really giving the customer control over that uh, split shipment experience in an omni-channel type of uh, fulfillment model so that's something we're working on right now um, and that also includes of course maybe I want to filter even you know that comes earlier in the buying journey it's like maybe I'm buying a dress for tonight so I want to filter I only want to see stuff that I can pick up in store locally period because that that's how what, what I need right um, releasing improvements to the product feeds by product feeds I mean those <laughs> XML style product feeds that are sent off to, out to different uh, consumers like marketing channels and so on. So we're releasing improvements there. We do localized feeds, right? So so we localize the feeds based on local inventory availability and local product data languages um, and so on. And we're releasing improvements to the feeds, uh, essentially making making it easier to to run localized marketing campaigns globally, so this whole team can r- really manage localized marketing globally. Um, so those are two two big areas we're working on. On on the B two B side, we're gonna um, release a, an improved look and feel to this uh, to this no code uh, storefront build that we have for B two B. So we're gonna have a sort of more a slightly more modern, up to date look and feel uh, to, to how that looks. So excited about that as well. Excellent. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, when it, it's always hard in these to because uh, we're doing short, sharp, concise updates to people. But you, you take a topic like omnichannel, and there's it's massive. So it's uh, you know, thank you for summarising quite succinctly where you guys are headed, uh, and I'm sure that that will pique people's interest. So we'll make sure that anyone who's listening, if you want to reach out, we'll have links on the landing page to Martin to Centra's website, so you can reach out and find more info if you want to. Uh, Martin, thanks so much awesome. for taking time again to to give us uh, a call to the update. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Excellent. Let's move on to our next vendor. Um, we are talking to Remarkable Commerce, and we're talking to Strategy Director Brad Holdsworth. Hey, Brad, good to see you again, mate. How are you? Hey, James. Yeah, really good. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. I look, really appreciate you taking the time to share the strategic update on Remarkable with the audience. So let's get cracking with the questions. The first one is about major new product releases from the last quarter, and like, what are the key things you're landing for merchants? Cool. Um We've been really focusing on three kind of core areas of the platform, um, driven mostly from what the industry is saying, um, but what existing clients are wanting more from us. So the first one has been around uh, CMS uh, and adding personalization into that. That's a piece we started last year and over the last, over the last quarter we've been working on um, allowing merchants to be able to personalize content based on a channel referrer. So for example, being able to natively in the platform uh, display content based on that channel type. That's the first thing. The other interesting topic has been around checkout. Um, some of our, a lot of our clients use Adyen for PSP and we've, we've developed a piece where clients can pay by link um, in a little bit more of a um, innovative way. So for example, what's common is a retailer will want to be able to um, send a link to a customer to be able to buy a service or buy an upgrade or a, or a certain element of a package. Normally, a lot of retailers will have to kind of create a product for them to buy. Uh, however, that doesn't always work. So what we've done with Adyen is a pay-by-link piece where the, where the merchant can actually define what that amount is and send that custom URL to the customer um, instead of them having to buy products and go through the checkout flow. So extensibility around checkout and payment types has been quite interesting for us. Um, one of the other things is around connected to that is around postcodes. So we've been working with a few different partners around uh, shipping prices by region. So we developed a piece that clients can now specify uh, shipping rates with a bit more control. So they can define a metric like a weight or a size or a brand define the price so on a, like on our service level so next day or standard etc and create the rules to define that on a regional basis so that's common in more kind of advanced shipping solutions so you might want to set a, a next day price for an ng19 postcode like mine or a um, an ng postcode might actually have a different rate 
So that kind of rate banding grid matrix piece, something we've developed a lot more on. And then on the back of that, we've gone on to reporting and done a lot of work on reporting. Um, all around give, giving our merchants a little bit more visibility and transparency because that's one of the big benefits that they get from us. So things like what products are selling the worst, for example, uh, what products are alive, technically live, but have no images, no assets attached to them, uh, and a lookup tool on that. Uh, another piece is around address type. So with a, is it a D2C or is it a B2B address type that someone's ordering from? And reporting on that as well. So quite a, a varied mix of things actually on that. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, I was, um, I was chatting with a few people out there, pay by link, and it seems like that's been demanded across different platforms from different merchants about the, the ability to control, customize, and have like a, a product centric, pricing centric. So that's really cool. Um, yeah. so let, let's move on to the, the next question, which is so you talked about the fact that you look at the industry as well as obviously client demands. So what are the key trends that, that Remarkable has seen that are going to influence your roadmap going forward over the next few quarters? Well, the industry is certainly becoming a lot more componentized and um, that composable trend is continuing to evolve. I think merchants are starting to understand what that means, what the benefits are, and we're starting to see a lot of our merchants challenge us in terms of extending that composable mindset into their technology stack. So we're starting to look at interchanging checkout types between different platforms. For example, we're looking to, um, we're ch being challenged a lot more in regards to front end capability and introducing different front end frameworks. That's something that's new. Um, so the trends are, are certainly around that composable piece. Uh, and we're trying to stay pace with that, of course. But we're trying to build natively into the platform. Um, uh, some roadmaps around, so CMS, for example, um, allowing a little bit more of a deeper integration between our inbuilt DAM and uh, content collections. So that's quite interesting. And then we're extending that to go into pop-ups and allowing clients to be able to control pop-up um, settings and content and styling inbuilt in the, in the platform with that rather than using integrations. One thing actually we're... Um, scoping at the moment that's going to be coming out later in the year is a retailing capability and again this was driven from industry trend um, we saw lots of merchandising tools quite advanced <laughs> advanced tools and um, talking around using insight to drive retailing rules so what we're de what we're developing at the moment is a um a dynamic balance factor capability that uses search query data. So like, for example, if you searched for red dress with uh, long, long sleeves and pockets, for example, customer would land on the dresses category, but we use that search query to actually influence it. So your red dresses with pockets with long sleeves would be then boosted higher up the category dynamically. That is rather than creating a new category, which is like the old school way of doing it. So that kind of dynamic retailing um, is something that's that's coming soon. Oh, that's really that sounds like a proper conversation we need to have outside of this, so I can get into a bit more detail on that. Um, so I will pause that that detail question, uh, and then we'll go on to our final kind of strategic update uh, question for this session, which is priorities for the next quarter in in the roadmap. So you talked about trends, you talked about some of the things that drop. What well, what are, uh, can you tease us with a few things that are likely to land next quarter? Yeah, sure. Um, well, we're doubling down on a certain few industries. Um, I'm not going to say today what those are, but we're certainly becoming a little bit more specialised in certain niches. Um, spaces that I feel perhaps are a little bit uh, underserviced from a commerce technology point of view. Certainly industries that perhaps are a little bit more archaic in their way of thinking, they're still D2C, but certain niches that perhaps we could um, really support on. So, uh, yeah, you'll you'll start to see from us over the next few months, a uh, few quarters, um, some brands that are well-established in certain niches that are just ready for a real a real uh, evolution. So, yeah, there's, there's certain niches that are going to do that. Um, 
Plus, there are obviously um, technologies in the market and agencies in the market which have changed their model over the last few months. Um, and we're going to, we're, we're having really good conversations with a lot of vendors that have been um, struggling to deal with that news and looking for alternatives. So there'll be more on that soon as well. Oh, I can't possibly think who you're referring to. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent. So look, thanks so much, Brad. And for anyone who's listening who wants to find out more about their, their strategic direction, also the areas that, that Brad's been talking about, then there's a link in the landing page uh, to Brad's um, profile on LinkedIn. Hook him up, um, ask him questions. He's always open and happy to answer. Um, thanks for joining us, Brad. Nice one, James. Nice one. Excellent. So now let's talk to, to Commerce Layer and welcome back to Seth, who's the VP of Marketing. Hi, Seth. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back, James. Good to be here. Um, yeah, thanks for taking time. So let's let's crack on and let's find out what you guys have been up to and where, where you're seeing the market going. So the first question that on this update is, what are the major new product releases from Commerce Layer uh, last quarter? Uh, like, what are the key things that you guys are landing and benefiting merchants with? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was reflecting on last time. I took a look at where we were last time when we had this conversation and then seeing all the stuff that we shipped. Um, we have done, we've been doing a lot. There's a lot of information in our change log that are just updates to our core API. Way too in the weeds to talk about here, but I always encourage everybody to take a look at our change log because you can see all the extent of everything we've been doing. But the highlights are, um, I think I mentioned it last time, we had shipped this really interesting provisioning API that allows admins at a company to provision the various applications we build for people to uh, manage their, their e-commerce. Alongside that, this quarter, we launched a new authentication API, which just allows for admins to easily add and, and revoke tokens for users. So the pairing of like how to provision your apps and then this authentication API really gives um, company admins at larger scale enterprises all the tools they need to, um, to manage their internal workforce who is using Commerce Layer to do e-commerce. So that's a little bit of a, you know, behind the scenes improvement, but a big one. You can read about that in our blog. Um, Front facing stuff that people will see, merchants will see, we launched four new applications inside our dashboard. And we also gave our dashboard a new uh, user interface kind of design lift just to make it feel a lot more modern, a lot more usable. Um, The four applications that we launched are a promotions app, um, a SKU and SKU lists app, a price lists app and an inventory app. Um, so just really quickly, I know this promotions app is what you think it is. Um, it allows uh, merchants to easily create promotions. We have seven different promotions that can be created from the promotions app that should cover the baseline of all use cases. Um, things like percent discount, fixed amount, fixed price, all, all the things that people look for when they're creating promotions. And then we have our external promotions API which allows you to always wire in an external promotions engine if for some reason our baseline app can't cover what you need. Um, The SKU and SKU list app um, tie to a real fundamental concept at Commerce Layer. Um, As I mentioned last time, and I'll say it again and again, we don't manage any content data inside Commerce Layer. So nothing like a product catalog. Um, The SKU becomes fundamentally important. So the SKU list app and the SKU app allows people to create and manage the SKUs and the SKU list that they use inside the markets where they sell object, uh, sell their products. Um, the price list app is tied very closely to the SKU. Um, every market needs to have a price list that assigns prices to the SKUs that they create. So the price list app allows for easy price list creation and editing and price lists can be used for different customer groups or assortments. They're really powerful um, tools for people. And then finally, the inventory app. And it probably sounds like what you think it is. It just sets stock levels for SKUs in each of your stock locations. It shows you all the stock locations you may have inside your market. It re- really allows your team to see all of this, the state of inventory across um, all of the inventory or stock locations inside markets where you, where you sell your stuff. So lots of good stuff. It's all visible in the dashboard when you log in with the newly designed dashboard. Um, and that summarizes a lot of what we've done over the past quarter. Amazing. Thanks. Really enjoyed that. Um, uh, I really love the fact that they're focused on some of the, what are not considered the sexy areas of e-commerce, but critical for operations and running stores around like SKUs and inventory. So really, you can see I've, I've definitely, can, I know from the market that more and more people are investing time and effort into getting control of this part of the business. So that's good news. Um, and let's, let's look at roadmap now. 
So what are the key trends that are currently influencing Commerce's roadmap? Yeah, well, I, I kind of tried to identify three three trends that I think would be interesting for your listeners, and it's what we see that's definitely influencing our roadmap. Um, the first one around a term we probably all have heard over the years, but I think it's making a resurgence. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. But, you know, walking around the floors at Shop Talk in Las Vegas or Barcelona, I, I kept seeing unified commerce. Um, I feel like there's a resurgence happening with unified commerce. But the thing is, like, what does it mean and to, and to whom does it mean what? You know, some people just lump it in with Omnichannel. Other people have different notions about that. Um, for us, it's definitely something that's influencing our roadmap. We can get a little bit more into that we talk but specifically you know we we look at things differently and how we create orders and then place and fulfill orders and so order creation with the underlying api that we have um it, it can it can happen anywhere online or offline and like that's that's helping us define things like our pos application all of our e-commerce apis that people have been using and because it's all powered by the same underlying api our unified commerce story becomes really powerful and actually quite simple. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that as you know, what, what we're looking to shift in the upcoming quarters. Um, second thing I would say is, as everyone is talking about it, AI, we don't see as much AI stuff directly inside what we do with, with respect to commerce platforms. Um, certainly within content creation, which sits alongside it, AI is prevalent. But um, it is a trend. And I think where we sit and where we're positioned nicely is that our external prices um, API and uh, many of our other external APIs that allow you to bring in any external service can wire in directly something like an AI uh, engine that might be generating prices for you. We actually did a, a blog post about how to generate prices with ChatGPT and then import those to make a dynamic AI powered pricing engine with ChatGPT and, and Commerce Layer. So we see that as a trend, obvious one. And then a third one, I would say, maybe slightly controversial to the audience um, who follows, you know, Composable and Mock, but I feel like there's a trend to simplify. I think there's people out there that are saying, hey, we, we love Composable, but like, it's complex. You know, is it right for me? Is it, is it too easy? Is it too much for my business? And I think like that, that need to continue to focus and continue to make it simple for merchants is a trend that will help define success inside this Composable space. Um, because I think a lot of people are saying, okay, we get it. Monoliths are hard to work with, but like, honestly, composable can be complex. How do you guys make it simple? And that's kind of what we've always tried to do is be super focused on what we do and keep it simple. Yeah, I think that's nice. I think I've definitely seen the need for simplification around the messaging on this because composable is a strategy meant to those things. But as you say, it's a huge thing and it can be quite daunting. So yeah, glad to hear that. Um, and then, yeah. and then the final, final question then for, for you and our like rapid fire update is yep. priorities for the next quarter. Where are you guys headed? What are you looking at? Yeah. So along the unified commerce, we'll continue to uh, focus in on building out our POS and continuing to optimize the order management applications that I've been talking about um, and shipping new ones. Um, in the order of simplification, you'll see a new product that we're shipping called Links. This will allow merchants to be able to make anything sellable through a URL where you can define the SKUs that you want to present in that URL and the channel where you want to sell it and just have a URL to sell stuff. And I know this sounds like overly simplified. That's the point. You see a lot of merchants out there saying like, yeah, I need to build an internal employee store. It doesn't need to be the easy, the most glossy thing. I just want to sell my product to my employees because they're actually a large base of, of purchasers. Something like a Lynx product that we're going to ship makes that dead simple. And then finally, um, continuing to improve our B2B efforts. Um, we have a lot of customers who sign on with us just for our B2B capabilities, but we know we have more. So then upcoming quarter, you'll see more and more B2B functionality getting shipped. So we're super excited about it. There's a ton of promise. Um, and we couldn't be more energized right now where we are. Excellent. I really enjoyed that. Thanks again for taking the time to join us and uh, look forward to the next quarterly update as well, sir. We'll be here and uh, definitely always enjoy being here. So thanks again for bringing us on. We're, we're psyched to be here. You're listening to the Inside Commerce podcast hosted by experienced consultants James Gerd and Paul Rogers. Inside Commerce is your fast track to digital knowledge, featuring interviews with leading e commerce retailers, industry thought leaders, and the C suite of key tech companies to explore the latest in digital strategy, customer experience, and tech. Discover what the latest trends really mean and get practical advice based on experience to help fine-tune your e-com strategy and tech stack.
follow us on LinkedIn and reach out to James or Paul if you'd like to discuss an e-commerce project. We hope you enjoy the latest episode.